Welcome, educators, parents, and scholar gamers, to the Academy of Esports, Episode 7. I'm your host, James O'Hagan. This is the podcast where I delve into topics surrounding education and esports. Esports allows schools to redefine their athletic culture, diversify opportunities for student participation, promote physical and mental health, and increase collegiate scholarship pathways, and play games. We cannot forget the importance of play. The mission of the Academy of Esports is to support these ideals. The vision of the Academy of Esports is for all students to experience the fun and joy of playing competitive video games. So, let's get started. And on this week's episode, I conduct my first interview with Jake Middleton of the Esports Performance Lab. We take the time to talk about good health, good nutrition, and the importance of those things and how they relate to esports. So now I give you the interview. Hi, this is James O'Hagan, the host of the Academy of Esports podcast, and I'm here with Jake Middleton. Jake is the founder and head trainer at Esports Performance Lab. Jake, thank you for being here tonight. And uh, I wanted to give the people an opportunity to hear a little bit about from you about some of the work that you do with regards to physical training, physical health, uh, and esports, because those things usually don't go together. So kind of tell us a little bit about yourself first, and then we'll get into some of the questions we have to discuss. Yeah, thank you for having me, James. Uh, so a little bit about myself. I uh, started my business, Esports Performance Lab, back in 2015, and I was kind of looking at the space, and I saw that there wasn't really a focus on physical training or fitness. And so I was trying to kind of career options, thinking about some things, and so I decided to kind of go ahead and do some research for my senior year on exercise and performance, and I kind of found out some good results. And so basically then I started Esports Performance Lab, and I started working with kind of educating players on the importance of physical training. We all know exercise, nutrition, things like that are good for us. And so basically I was trying to kind of modify that and specialize it for esports and why that's important for esports athletes. And so that's kind of developed and continued on, and I've got this partnership with Acer Predator now where I do content for them, which has helped me out big time, and definitely, I think, with my reach with educating people on physical training. So that's kind of where it's going, and now I'm hoping to kind of get in to work with high school esports programs and college programs as well. So, um, you know, the, the common misperception about professional gamers, at least, is that it is a group of people who eat a lot of Cheetos, drink a lot of Red Bull or Mountain Dew. Yep. Um, what kind of training do professional gamers employ, physical and nutritional training? What kind of things do they have to go through? So it depends on the team and organization. Everyone's going to be different, but a lot of them usually have focused periods of training where they train for, like, say, three hours. They'll scrim against a team playing together, and then they'll take, a, like, a small break, and then they'll go back to playing for, like, you know, a very focused – three hours and then after that you know they'll do things like uh, whether it's like physical exercise uh, they'll eat healthy throughout the day they'll go over film and even stuff like they'll go out and socialize too to help with the development of you know their players on a social and emotional level too so kind of stuff like that but very focused training um but they i mean it just depends on the team and organization some teams go overboard you know where they'll practice six maybe to ten hours a day a lot more than some others and when you're talking about those teams and you say you specifically use the term overboard, um, what is some of the, I guess you could say harm that could come from overtraining in, in when you're, when you're training for esports games specifically? Yeah. So, um, stress is, is good. You want a little bit of stress to get some adaptations that can help you with your performance and so on and so forth. Too much stress is going to be bad. So you want to make sure that you add in rest. Stress plus rest equals growth. So if you're having too much stress, you're going to lead to overtraining and burnout and stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you know you're not doing too much. If you're training 12 hours a day, you know you're probably going to increase your risk of injury, your risk of burnout. So you need to make sure that you're doing the other things like getting enough sleep, make sure you're eating well, um, even doing things like meditation stuff that can help you out too. And I want to talk about sleep a little bit as well. We may jump around a little bit here, but sleep is also something that I've started to uh, study in my own right. I even have an app on my Apple Watch that 
that kind of rates my sleep uh, throughout the night based on REM cycles, deep sleep, light sleep, and then whether I wake up or not. Um, how important is sleep? For sleep us? is so important, uh, especially for esports athletes on a, for a number of reasons. One, because of memory consolidation, what you learn throughout the day, new skills and things like that. If you're not getting enough sleep, you don't actually you know, solidify those memories till the next day. You're not actually getting the gains that you would want to get. That's one reason, then obviously performance too, performance and health, you know, if you're not getting enough sleep. Especially with like games, like um, if you're practicing, like playing before you go to bed, the blue light from the screen, stuff like that, is really bad because that suppresses melatonin, and then therefore you have problems trying to get to sleep, and then it just compounds after that. And then even at tournaments too, you know, you that, that happens with any athlete though, you know, you kind of get nervous, you know, you're excited for competition and stuff like that, and so kind of just trying to have a consistent sleep schedule is going to help you so when you get to the tournament, you can still get that sleep so you'll perform at your best when you need to. And you, you provide some general tips around sleep. Um, what are some of the great things that people can do to, to make sleep uh, an important part of their day? Or part, I should say important part of their day. Hopefully their night and part of their training. Yeah, I mean, what should I'm, they do to, to, make, to, to get, I guess, the best sleep possible? I'd say um, if you're sleep deprived, then like during the day you could take a short power nap. 20 minutes is usually kind of like the ideal zone. Don't go any farther than that. And then also just make sure you get physical activity and exercise too. If you're doing that, you know, especially in the morning or afternoon is usually ideal. If you're doing it in the evening, sometimes that can stimulate a little too much so then you, you have trouble falling asleep. So definitely power nap if you need it. Um, getting exercise, physical activity throughout the day, and then eating well too is going to help out. So let's talk a little bit about exercise because this is something that uh, my minor, I got a minor at Purdue University in coaching, so I have some physiology background, but not as a, as a major focus like you have. Um, I've talked to students about the importance of doing things like weight training, aerobic training, meditation. What kind of things should they be doing, though? Am I, am I telling them the right things, or, or am I off base? Or, or what, would, what should a new coach know who is saying, yeah, I'm really excited about starting this eSports team up, but I really don't know what else I should do to help get my kids to the next level? I think for a new coach, just try to keep everything as simple as possible. You know, it's not a pro team or anything like that, so you don't have to do any specific type of things trying to, you know, increase these type of adaptations physically, mentally, whatever. Just try to make sure that the kids are getting physical activity and exercise, whether that's just them going out, playing basketball, shooting hoops, things like that, going on a walk together as a team, talking about strats and things, or even just like together in the weight room or something like that, you know. Um, just make sure that they're kind of they're getting those things and the coach is aware of like, you know, trying to educate them on how to eat better, you know, making sure they're getting enough sleep and trying to get them to just buy into these things, you know, because obviously high school athletes and kids, you know, they're, you know, obviously, you know, they're not going to necessarily do this stuff as a gamer. When I was in high school, I didn't do that stuff necessarily. So, you know, trying to get them to buy into that stuff to realize that they need that, especially if they want to go to the next level and get a college scholarship or go play at the pro level. And let's say I am a gamer who decides, okay, I'm going to buy in and I'm going to get myself right. You know, I'm 16 years old. Um, I've never had to really think about a diet before. Um, exercise hasn't been really something that I've really employed. Um, what can I do? When, when should I start seeing, or, or if I, let me back up for a second. What should I do to get started? Like if I don't know what I'm doing and I'm 16, mm -hmm. you know, there's you can go on the internet and find all kinds of information about, you know, you know, get ripped, get, you know, go do this program, you know, do go to a CrossFit gym, go to the Y, uh, join this club, whatever it is. But what could I do very simply to just get, I've never, let's say I'm a kid who never worked out. What can I do to get started? So that's a great question. Um, try and like, if you're school, if you have any resources with like a coach or something like that, that could help you out. Um, or in your community, like a trainer at like the YMCA or some sort of gym, um, or the internet is great too, but obviously there's a lot of misinformation out there. So like you can learn bad things too. So make sure that it's from a reputable source. Um, there are a lot of them out there though. Um, obviously what I'm doing is that's what I'm trying to help people who are interested in starting kind of getting them going in the right direction and stuff. Um, and then just, uh, yeah, those are pretty much, yeah, the basic ones I'd say. 
And uh, I think it's important too that, yeah, you, you did touch on one thing very quick, briefly. I mean, granted that, yes, you are, this is the business you're working in as well, but for a lot of our high school students, they do have resources right there. There are coaches, there are teachers who do have some expertise, at least to get you moving in the right direction. And hopefully, at least in, in Racine, Wisconsin, every kid has to take a health class. So hopefully they paid attention in some regard yeah. in their health class. <laughs> Um, it doesn't seem like there's any big secret here to it either, but um, let's talk about nutrition. I mean, I will, well, let's kids... say this real quick. Oh, yeah, sure. I will say this. So a great thing, too, that I hope within high school esports, and I might try to talk to some people as well, is to try to incorporate the physical education classes with the esports so that while they're training, too, and learning you know, how to play certain games and stuff, they're also learning the importance of fitness and so on and so forth. So like connecting it to their interests, like just how we would with like, say, a football player who, you know, wants to be a great football player. The coach is going to say, OK, you need to lift these weights. You need to perform these drills. You need to do these things. Correct. Kind of the same. Exactly. Thing right. Exactly. Yeah. So but let's say I'm new at eating. I've never had to think about eating before. Again, I, I just whatever was given to me was what I ate. Uh, I would go out and, you know, when I was in high school, I was a kid who was 300 pounds. So I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so, if the, again, thinking about just with the health, if I'm a kid who needs to start eating right, what can I start doing right away? Where, where should I look? Where should I go? You know, do, should I be taking pills? Should I be taking supplements? What, what could I do very simply to get started? I'd go online probably and look up, you know, how to eat well and things like that and some great resources will pop up that the government has and things like that so they can learn some simple ideas and things like that and then if you're in a position to where you've just been eating bad you know and your weight management's not where you want it to be like just start making small changes that's what research has shown to be the best thing like don't try to just i'm going to go on this diet you know for this month i'm going to eat like this it just doesn't work but you know it doesn't pan out so like just make small changes if you're drinking five sodas a day cut back to three sodas, you know, do that for a month and then cut back maybe down to one, you know, just like those little small changes like that, little small goals can help out in the long run. And let's say I start making those small changes. What dif what differences should I look for? Or what, not just differences, what should I look for that's a good sign or what should I look for that's a bad sign as I, if I'm starting to make these changes? So a good sign would be hopefully whatever your goal is, like if you want to lose weight, if you're losing weight, you know, let's like say two pounds a week or something like that, that then that's a good sign. Um, if you're starting to feel better too, like physically and mentally, if you have more energy, things like that, that's a good sign as well. The great thing with the thing with nutrition is like you can get immediate benefits if you're not eating like fast food and things like that all the time because you get that increase in blood sugar, you know, you get mental, physical fatigue, then you got to eat more sugar again, you know, just to get right back to where you were. But so usually over time, like say like, you know, a few months, you're going to start seeing big benefits. The same thing with exercise too, when it comes to like weight management and stuff. But even exercise, like it was a, there's a cool research study I saw that literally 10 minutes of like high intensity exercise actually helped with cognitive performance in young adults. And so like if you do that before, you know, as a warm up for a gaming session, you know, that kind of helps you right there just improve your performance. They think that's because, you know, increased blood flow to the brain and stuff like that. So you can see immediate benefits as well, but obviously to get the real benefits, like the physical mental health stuff is definitely going to take, you know, a couple months. You need to make it into a habit. It's a lifestyle, you know, so it's not something you can just do for two weeks and, you know, say I'm good. You know, you got to keep doing it. Consistency is key. It's funny. Uh, I, I've actually said to my uh, CrossFit coaches that I'm going to make CrossFit and esports like a thing like they're going to get married together at the hip someday because that would be awesome well I mean because it is CrossFit is my, my time in the gym is usually roughly an hour and it's some warm-up time and then it's anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes of high intensity training and and everything that I've seen and what you've just said too kind of reiterated that that's the kind of training that is ideal for this kind of brain development that we're talking about um, for, for our, our uh, scholar gamers yeah, and it's, you get the most bang for your buck, too. I mean, you can do it in 30 minutes and get the same benefits that you would running at steady state for an hour and a half. So, like, you know, for gamers, that just gets you right back into the game quicker. So, um, now, we've talked about the long-term benefits, and you, you did touch on, you know, cutting back on sodas. Let's talk about the other thing that's kind of associated with gaming uh, as far as nutrition goes, and that's caffeine. 
And I know that I myself was a guy who used to drink probably 64 ounces of Diet Mountain Dew a day. Um, and then when I didn't have it, I would have migraine headaches. Um, I would feel kind of off. Um, how is, is, is caffeine a problem or, or what should I do with caffeine? Because, you know, Red Bull is a big sponsor of esports. And I yeah. know that oh, yeah. in, I know that in Denmark in particular, they've actually said we're not going to take sponsorships from sugary sport drink companies, uh, for example. So what do we do about caffeine? How do we address caffeine? Because it seems to be everywhere. That's a great question. So like with Red Bull, they, the good thing is, is they do have options that are low sugar or no sugar at all. So if you're going to grab Red Bull or anything like that, go for that option. Try not to get the sugar with the caffeine because uh, that can just make things worse. And as for caffeine, the recommended daily amount is about 300 milligrams. So it, it depends on the person too. Some people are more caffeine sensitive, some are not, some can have more. For me, if I drink, you know, say a cup of coffee past 2 p.m., I won't be able to sleep that night. That's just how I am. So you have to kind of know yourself how much caffeine can you tolerate. You know, if you know, like, you know, I usually drink six cups of coffee a day, you know, and it makes me tired, you know, in the evenings, things like that. Like then you probably should slowly start cutting back a little bit too. So, um, so um, with the with regards to the uh, uh, the coffee, um, and you said three hundred milligrams. How much is three hundred milligrams? I don't even know. For coffee, that'd be about usually, that'd be about three or four cups of coffee. Okay. Depending on how you brew it, usually a cup of coffee is about sixty milligrams. And so we're talking probably like 12 ounce cups or eight ounce cups. We're not talking like, you know, three venti Starbucks. You know? No. Yeah. Yeah. Probably like an eight ounce cup. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's, that's important to know too. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about, you know, nutrition and we've kind of jumped into some training things a little bit, but again, let's say I'm a new coach and I do want to incorporate some of these things and I say, okay, great. We want to do, you know, some warm ups. We want to do some 30 minutes of drills. I'm going to talk to you guys about, your eating habits. What about, you know, what can I do as a coach for drills to warm my guys up? You know, I've heard some guys say, well, we just jump in and start playing, but is there things I can do that can like help with training of my hands? It seems like hands, shoulders, neck seem to be things that, re that I think you've touched on in the past that need to be developed um, to be a really good gamer. What are, what are some drills or things I could do very easily, even if I don't have access to say a weight room or something like that? Definitely. I mean, you can get fancy with it, but I mean, it also can be really simple. So like, say if you have wherever you're playing, you know, you could just do some body weight stuff like push-ups are great. You know, it's a compound exercise. I'll hit chest, shoulders, sit-ups, hit the core. You can do planks too. That way when you're sitting for long periods of time, like a few hours, if you're doing a gaming session, you know, you're not slouching too much. You can still keep the core activated. Uh, things like just stretches, like you said, like the hands, like doing, um, there's a lot of different hand stretches you can do, but just like extension and flexion stuff. Just that way, you know, you don't risk, you know, the repetitive stress injuries and things like that occurring. Um, the neck too, doing a few neck stretches helps out with posture. Um, and just making sure your ergonomics are good too. Like uh, your feet are flat on the ground, you know, your, your eyes are level with the top of your screen. Uh, just a few things like that. But mostly just like those simple exercises you could do just about anywhere. Push-ups, sit-ups, jumping jacks, planks. And then doing some stretches for the neck, hands, and even the hamstrings too. It's funny as rules would all be good. I'd say if you can try to like develop a pre pre warm up ritual. It's funny as you were saying that uh, I was being very mindful of the way I was sitting, so I started to shift and adjust in my seat and sit up a little bit more. I kind of did that too. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> uh, get up here. <laughs> and it's and I'm reminded too. Um, there's a study that I uh, I read not too long ago uh, by a guy named Dr. Breidiger out of Germany. Uh, he, he did some consulting work for a company called VS, which makes school furniture. And his concept is bodies in motion, our brains in motion. So he talks about even the chair that we sit in needs to allow some natural movement. So, you know, you talked about ergonomics uh, there for a second. And yeah, a lot of the chairs, I mean, I walk into some school buildings and I'm stunned that there's the ability for some of the children to sit 45 minutes, let alone 20 minutes in some of these Chairs. Super have, uncomfortable, yeah. And we have block scheduling in our high school, so they are sometimes sitting there for 90 minutes in these immobile chairs. So, you know, you look at some of the game, uh, the the esports, um, you know, tournaments, 
And the chairs that people are sitting in are seem to be ones that move around and allow for easy glances back and forth because there's a lot of team play. Um, are there certain brands of chairs we should be looking at as far as esports goes? Because I mean, there is a lot of sitting. There is a lot of um, you know concerns about you know carpal tunnel syndrome, things like that. Is, is yeah. there anything we should keep in mind with those? Definitely, there are a lot of gaming chairs out there. There's a lot of brands. I won't just like name a specific one, but. Uh, there are a lot of them that I think even as a high school esports program or team, you could contact them and see if you know they'd be interested in sponsoring you and things like that. They could give you a free chair to try out to see if it works. A lot of them are great for lumbar support to help keep in good posture, and then they have support for your neck as well. So like stuff like that. Like if you're gaming for a long time, you know I'm sure those chairs that you guys have are just not you know I would hurt the uh, hurt the rump a little bit too. Yeah, it, 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 some of them are on folding chairs. I've seen it happen. Um, folding chairs are used uh, quite a bit. So that's a problem too. Like if you think for like performance, if you're uncomfortable, you know, shifting around a lot too while you're playing, like that's going to affect your performance, take your mind off from the game. That's a that's an excellent point because it's a lot is is being in the moment and not having to worry about does my does my butt hurt from sitting too long here. Uh, Jake, we only have a couple more minutes. Is there anything else that you wish to share? Any misconceptions you wish to dispel? Any other thoughts that you want to get through? And of course, I want to give you an opportunity to kind of promote the work that you're doing there at uh, at the eSports Performance Lab. Yeah, I just want to say um, to those out there, you know, obviously negative stereotypes about gamers, you know, they're lazy and things like that. I mean, but the ones I've worked with in, in, in eSports and stuff, like they obviously put a lot of work in and a lot of them, you know, almost uh, just as much as any other athlete, if not more. And some of them, you know, I think people think that gaming and esports is kind of like it's going to be bad for you. It's a waste of time. But, you know, it's definitely now that the structure and stuff that's going on, like you can obviously make a career out of it. You can make money out of it, you know. Um, and it's just like any other sport. Like you can learn things like discipline, communication skills, teamwork and stuff like that, um, especially in like a structured setting like at a high school or college or pro team. So a lot of things like that like are changing and, and so I hope people start to see you know that you know it's just like any other sport and it can be beneficial especially in a game that just focuses mostly on the mind but also with what I'm trying to do bringing physical education physical training so that they're working on the bodies as well staying healthy Fantastic and Jake if anybody needs to get more information from you what's a phone number or website that they can go to to get more information from you about uh, your program So they can go to esports Lab.com. I've got articles on there uh, one, one via Acer time. Predators website. One more time. Sorry, sorry. Say that again because it just just as you were getting it out, we got the first like glitch of the night. So say that one more time. What is it? Esportsperformancelab.com. Esportsperformancelab.com. And where else can you say they can get information? Uh, either via my website or Acer Predators website. They'll have training room content uh, through articles that I write for them. And I'll make sure, too, on uh, this episode of the podcast, there will be in the show notes, there will be a link to Jake's website, and there will also be links to his articles on the Acer Predator website as well, too. So, Jake, thank you very much for being here. It was great to be talking with you. You too, James. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks. That will do it for this week on the Academy of Esports. I've been your host, James O'Hagan, and I thank Jake Middleton for being a guest on my podcast. You may follow me on Twitter, at Jim O'Hagan. That's at J-I-M-O-H-A-G-A-N. And while you're at it, you can also follow T-A-O Esports on Twitter. That's at T-A-O Esports on Twitter. It's a great way to get the latest blog posts, podcast episodes, and news coming out of the esports and education world. And remember, you can continue your engagement by going to www.taoesports.com. You can also connect through Facebook at www.facebook.com slash taoesports. Thanks again for listening, and I look forward to our time again next week.